Let's get started with our detailed diagnostic step-by-step instruction for B0443 diagnostics. Let's get our direction from the code. The code says the evaporative emission control system purge solenoid control valve circuit. It does not give us a clear direction as what's wrong with that circuit. So we need to do a complete test. But the keyword circuit indicates we're working on an electrical problem, and that tells us the PCM is going to monitor the voltage status on the control circuit while the comprehensive component monitor with a comprehensive component monitor, which runs continuously. So that's going to make life easier for us. We don't have any four- to eight-hour wait for a leak test. We don't have to worry about running the canister purge test. Nothing. All we have to do is make sure that this solenoid works electrically. And this diagnostic we found applies to all the vehicles we worked on. We haven't found any exceptions. But remember, not all vehicles will have a P0443. Let's get to our diagnostic. First thing we do always is use a vehicle-specific diagram. We know we have an improper voltage level that has been detected by the computer on the output circuit of the PCM, which controls the canister purge solenoid valve. We're going to do a voltage test first. It's a good place to start. It's easy to do. We could do current tests. We're going to do both of them. You take your choice. Let's talk about this voltage test. What we know is that the voltage at this test point on, on pin B or down at pin 76 of C1 on the PCM, and I guarantee you it's easier to get to the, to the solenoid, the voltage should be B plus with 0% duty cycle, and it should decrease voltage as the duty cycle is increased, getting down to very low voltage, usually under 1 volt at 100% duty cycle. We're going to use bidirectional control on our auto ingenuity to do this test. Let's go back and remind you of that. Look down here at the bottom. It says evaporative emissions vapor management duty cycle. We can command it 0 to 100%. So we're going to use this bidirectional test and vary our voltage as we and watch the voltage vary as we change this. Now, if check for missing B+, plus, open circuit in the wiring, open solenoid or pro connection, if this doesn't work, if we vary this and there's no change whatsoever, then the voltage change, we need to go look at something. If it's zero volts, let's go back to look at B+. Plus. We're going to cover both shorted circuits and opens in this circuit. So let's go back and talk about that. We could use a low amps probe. A low amps probe will tell us the current flow. Remember, if we had a shorted control circuit, we would have current flow all the time. So if the low amp probe indicates no current flow, when we try to turn this on, we need to go back and make sure the B-plus is there, check solenoid resistance, and make sure the PCM driver is working. Remember, we use bidirectional. So we were telling the driver to turn this circuit on. We don't know for sure the driver is functional at this point. It's very rare on new drivers they go bad, but it's always possible. Let's talk about other things we need to look at. We can use current flow on the B-plus side or the ground side. doesn't matter which side it on. Current flow will show up either way. But let's look at an alternative current test. We could use a standard multimeter. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to test with key on engine off. We're going to move the red lead on our voltmeter from the voltage position over to the amps side. This is a 10-amp scale. This is an internal amp shunt with a fuse. If we put it over there, it's basically a short circuit between ground and the amps probe. So remember to move it back when testing is complete. Otherwise, you're going to blow that fuse, and it's pretty expensive. Let's talk about this current flow and what it indicates. If current flow will be normal, if the solenoid is off and the B-plus is supplied and the driver is not turned on. Oh, driver not turned on. Well, let's talk about how we calculate what current should be. In this case, we've measured and found we have 12.6 volts as B+. Plus. We know we have 381.8 milliamps of current flow. So we calculated it turned out to be at 33 ohms, and that falls in spec of our resistance up there, 28 to 36. Everything, resistance, it looks good. From that standpoint, we know everything from the solenoid and B+, plus is normal. We don't know if the control circuit is fully connected. It may not be connected to C1 down on the PCM. We do know that the uh, driver transistor can turn off at this point. 
Remember, this test will not work if that driver transistor or control circuit is shorted to ground. So let's go check that short. Easy way to check for a short. If we have a short, we will have current flow with the control off. If we have current flow, the driver or the control circuit is shorted to ground. So if we have current flow, we need to check that circuit to make sure it's not going to ground. And you can't necessarily say unplug the powertrain control module because half the time that upsets things. Be careful how you do this. Well, we can check, open it up and check a resistance to ground if we have to. The other thing we can talk about, if it's working normal and we can't get current flow, we don't see any change in current flow, but we have a good circuit on the, on the output. If B plus has a problem, we have to use a vehicle-specific diagram. We picked another one showing the same type of arrangement. We're going to make sure we got B plus and fuses. So if we, don't, we can't get B plus at pin B and we don't have a grounded control circuit, we go back the opposite direction. Do we have B plus at pin A? If we don't, we go back and start checking the fuses. And make sure that all this test. If the ground is not tested with a voltmeter, it will be necessary to check the PCM and grounds. Uh, if the meter passed, the solenoid will not energize. Make sure the PCM is working, hasn't got a blown fuse. There's not something oddball going on with it. Let's talk about an alternative diagnostics once we find out we can't be, get B plus at B. We move up to terminal A and check for B plus. If it's not there, check for an open back up at the fuses or something. Now, remember, we supplied a ground. We tested it. It passed. You may need to check the PCM and, and PCM grounds if the multimeter passed and the solenoid will not energize and everything else appears to be normal. We may have a PCM problem. But don't forget, the PCM has to have a ground in order to give a ground. So don't ignore that. We should have a multiple diffuser codes if we have a PCM ground problem because not only will this be malfunctioning, but a number of other things, and the vehicle probably will not start. So our diagnostic resistance, we can go back and do this if you want to. We can come out here and we can measure it. But remember, we only check the coil of wire. Our current testing with a voltmeter and the low amps probe both tested resistance of the solenoid. So we can do this if we need to, but don't ignore the possibility. Here's our summary. We set this because the voltage was not low with the solenoid energized or was not B plus with the solenoid off. We don't know which because the diagnostic trouble code description did not tell us. We tested the complete circuit to find it. The low amp probe testing was quick. It does not require opening the circuit and it can quickly identify short to ground or shorted PCM driver because we'll have current flow with the solenoid off. Resistance testing has its place in the diagnostic, but it may not be the most efficient test early in the diagnostic process. If you get down to the point you think it's the, the internal resistance of the solenoid, go ahead, take your own meter out and test it. But this should take you through and find a solution to anything that gives you a P0443.